That's more intense, folks. Doing this a little earlier. I am um, usually do this in the truck. But I've been doing it in the house today because as soon as I get to work, I'm doing dumpsters today, what we call commercial, where we do nothing but businesses and residents at dump dumpsters. So that's why we're doing it. That's why we're doing it here. Today is called Beyond Pettiness for August 26, 2022. We have a quote from D.L. Moody. I have never yet known the Spirit of God to work where the people's, where the Lord's people were divided. How true that is. If you ever been to a church and see it divided? It happens. The devil can walk right into a church and he loves to divide. Starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam. So drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. Proverbs 17 and 14. In word, what is the human psyche? that compels us to pursue a matter straight into the heart of a conflict. Do we just enjoy a good fight? For some reason we frequently feel we must establish truth as we see it and even the most petty of disagreements. We often value our opinions more than we value our relationships. Why is that? What so captures our indignation, which is righteous anger? that we will sacrifice friendships and feelings over something that just isn't worth it. Blessed are those who do not have a, a contentious spirit within them, but most people at some time or another have struggled with one. It is human nature. We feel offended when people disagree with us, and we are bent on establishing what is right and wrong, even when there is no right and wrong. Does this mean there is no place for conflict? Obviously not. We are called to stand up for what is morally and spiritually right to a point, even Jesus was no stranger to conflict, and he is our model. But we must develop the discernment to know what is worth fighting for and what is not. Most of us find ourselves frequently confused on the issue. Indeed, the conclusion. When we sense a conflict escalating, what is your response? Do you take it as a challenge to win? Or can you step back and assess whether it is really worth fighting for? Broken relationships are no pleasure to God. He even inspires the writer to call a cruel sin. A few verses later, petty squabbles once begin, once begun are hard to stop. They do not suit a child of God. Learn to practice the discipline of restraint. Do not run from an important issue, but do not pursue a pointless one. Let relationships become more important to you than petty proofs and problems. God has done so with us. We must do so with others. That's a pretty good one, Beyond Pettiness, I like that. I am, I've gotten a lot better in this area. Of course, I still need, I'm, I'm, a, I'm clay on the potter's wheel, so to speak. What I think with friends, you can agree to disagree, and I believe that that is a really good thing. And if you have a friend that's just having a bad day, and you're hearing things come out of them when you know that they're a child of God, but they're having a bad day. Because let me tell you, anger was my problem. I'm like Peter in the Bible. That's why I say that a lot. I mean, they even said it at the church I used to go to, Washington. I said, I'm, I'm the Peter of the Bible for our church. Because <laughs> I'm fiery. When I got mad, I would just really be mad. But that was in 2015. Here I am seven years later. The fuse has gotten a lot longer. It takes a lot more to make me mad, especially since I buried Annie. When I buried her December 23rd, it brought a sense of peace that surpasses all understanding even more so, because it made, it made me worship God even more so. It made me thank Him for taking her home. It made me thank, thank Him for seeing her have to suffer in multiple hospitals throughout Oklahoma and even Texas no more. She's where she wanted to go, and she made it home. That's a shadow of a doubt. But she would even tell me, you know, a friend, a friend is someone that's going to stand with you. And to take it even further than that, I remember one time I was drinking at the, right by the hi-hat in a bar called TA's, and um, I used to write really rugged poetry, and this old white man read my stuff, and he looked at it, he goes, you know what, this would be a lot better if you take these cuss words out. And that made me mad. <laughs> and then he turned around and he goes, You don't know a friend is someone or or someone that gives you drugs and alcohol ain't no friend at all. Ooh, that made me double mad. <laughs> Cause man, he came to a bar 
to see people, but he didn't drink. Now I understand that all these years later, being sober for over 14 years, I understand. But be beyond pettiness. Don't, you know, if you disagree with your friends, keep them as your friend. Disagree to disagree. And, you know, this is what I'm getting to right here. What I've learned to do, and it's hard to do, let them rattle, let them rant, let them rant, rah, 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 even if they're cussing, dropping the F-bomb and all the bombs of the foolish cuss words. Let them go. And then when they're done, look at them and say, do you feel better about yourself? Because do you really think that our friendship is worth throwing away over this? Because I don't think so. There is no greater love to give one's life for one's friends. You know, Jesus was the one who's the, he's more than our Lord and our Savior. He's the best friend we'll ever have. He'll never steer you wrong. Do you really want to throw that away? Do you really want to throw me away for the foolishness of your madness right now? So if you love me, let's pray together. Let's get rid of this thing together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's what I suggest. Well, there it is right there. And I'm learning, y'all. You can be like uh, Jesus, poor Pontius Pilate, and just be quiet, too, and just walk away. So I bless you. I'll talk to you another time or something. You know, you can make the right decision. And if they want to keep on keeping on on the fiery trials of being hateful, then that's on them. The death either makes you bitter or makes you better. And I'm not talking about death being someone in the ground. I'm talking about death being bad spirits upon someone that they don't want to let go of. Because believe it or not, some like said in the darkness, they do not want the power of the light. But as for you and I, we'll keep on keeping on with that fight. And I'm going to leave that right there. Be blessed. You're on Warpath today.